This video is about repeating things in R by integrating our own functions with dplyr and the kinds of approaches we've used there before. And we can uh, integrate both vectorized and non-vectorized functions with dplyr. And we can use them to both repeat calculations for every row uh, in a data frame or uh, for every group in a data frame by using group by. We're going to start where we left off last time uh, with our estmass function that has a conditional in it uh, and we had a vector of volumes and a vector of vegetation types. We're going to go ahead and load the dplyr package because that's what we're working with today. And then we need to uh, create a data frame because that's what dplyr works with. And so I'm going to call this plant data and create it using data.frame. And we're just going to give it one column, which is our volumes data, and a second column, which is our veg type data. And the last thing I'm going to do to set up is we're going to create a simpler version of this function, going back to uh, one that we created early when learning about iteration, uh, which we'll call est mass vectorized just to communicate that this function is actually vectorized. And we're just going to create the simple function that does this calculation for all volumes. And so we'll call this, we'll say function. It'll take volume as an input because that's the only thing it's going to work with. Use our curly brackets to uh, define what's in the function. And then we'll say mass is 2.65 times volume raised to the 0 0.9, and then return our mass. And so we'll start by working with this vectorized function. And if we want to do the same operation over and over and over again for every row in a data frame, and create a new column. For vectorized functions, we can just do that directly using the mutate function. And so uh, we'll start a dplyr pipeline like we've done before by starting with the data that we're going to work with. That's plant data here. We'll then add a pipe to pass that plant data into the mutate function. And then remember the mutate function will create a new data frame with all of the existing columns plus a new column, as many new columns as we want. And we create those new columns by giving them a name. And so here we're going to estimate some masses. So we'll call this masses and then equals. And then we provide it the calculation that we want to do or the function that we want to run to create this new column. And so for us, we're going to run our est mass vectorized function, and we're going to run that on the volumes column of our data frame. And when we do that, we'll see that everything just ran. And that's because, like the other functions we've used with mutate, estmast vectorized is vectorized. It'll take a vector. It'll do only vectorized-based calculations or run vectorized functions inside and then return a vector of the same length as the output. And so this works seamlessly with dplyr's mutate, just like if we ran the square root function, or did some mathematical calculations uh, right here.
Now, if we're working with non-vectorized functions, this won't work. And we can see that if we remove the underscore vectorized. So we're now going to work with our uh, non-vectorized est mass function with the conditional in it. And that function also needs a vegetation type. So we can add veg type here as the second argument. And this seems like the sort of thing that should just work. But what we'll see is that we get the wrong result. We've gotten null values even when the vegetation type is tree. And we get a warning message uh, that says the condition has length greater than one and only the first element will be used. And so what's happening is veg type here is an entire column of the data frame, an entire vector. And so when this conditional gets run, it looks to see, is this entire vector equal to the string tree? And that doesn't really make sense as a comparison. And so the if statement then only checks the first value in all of these conditional comparisons. So it effectively just checks to see if the first value of veg type is equal to tree. It's not because the first value is shrub. And so it says this condition isn't satisfied. Therefore, we go to the else. We set mass to NA and return a single value of NA, which then gets filled in everywhere. And so this definitely isn't the behavior that we want. And this warning is important because it's telling us that R is probably doing something strange that we don't want it to. And so for the same reason that just running this function on vectors doesn't work, running it using mutate in dplyr doesn't work. They're very equivalent things. To get around this, we can add the function rowwise to our dplyr pipeline. And so before I run mutate, I'm going to add row wise. And it's a function, so it needs the parentheses, though there's nothing inside of them. And then we'll pipe this into mutate. And just running the row wise part on its own, we'll see we still have our data frame like before, but just like when we run group by, we get sort of a different version. It's got some information in here that says, I'm going to be worked with row wise. And so then when we pass it to mutate, mutate will work differently. And so when we run this code, we can see that it gives us back the result that we wanted. We've got NA for shrub, because the veg type was not tree, uh, but we have actual calculated values for both of the cases where the veg type was tree. And so this line is telling dplyr to work with the data one row at a time, just like when we run a function with apply functions. So it'll take the first row of the data, run it through the function, then the second row of the data, run it through the function, and so on, instead of trying to take the entire columns of data from the full data frame and run them through the function. We can also combine our own functions with group by and summarize to repeat a calculation for each group in a data frame. For example, in our case, we could do a calculation separately for each vegetation type. To work with group by, these functions should take one or more vectors of values as input. Those vectors will represent the data for each group and return a single value. And so let's write a function 
that calculates the biomass, which is the sum of the individual masses for all of the volumes that are passed to it. And so this will let us calculate the biomass for each plant type. And so we'll call this get biomass and it's a function. And we'll calculate our biomass in this case using this S mass vectorized function to keep things simple. And so the only input that get biomass will need is the volumes column. We can then run uh, our est mass function and store the output in something we'll call masses. And so we'll run est mass vectorized and pass it our volumes. And then we can calculate our biomass, which is going to be the sum of all of those masses. And then we can return biomass back to the main program, back to our dplyr pipeline in this case. So let's go ahead and define that function. And let's check it real quick and make sure it works. I'll run get biomass on our full volumes vector. And it takes all of those volumes, estimates masses, and sums them up. Great. So now let's run this with dplyr. We want to calculate a biomass for each vegetation type. And so we're going to start with our plant data. We'll pipe that as an input. And the first thing we need to do is group it using group by. And we're grouping by our veg type column. And then we're going to pipe that into summarize. And now for summarize, we're going to calculate a biomass for each group. So we'll call the resulting column biomass. And that's equal to the output from our get biomass function with the volumes column as input. And so this should calculate one biomass an average biomass for each vegetation type. And if we'll run this, we see that that's exactly what we get. Uh, we get uh, the single value uh, calculated for shrub, because there's only one shrub, and then the values of mass for each of the two trees are then added together to give us our biomass. And so that's the idea behind how we use dplyr and our own functions to repeat things. To repeat things once for each row to create new columns, we use the mutate function. If our function that we want to use to in mutate is vectorized, we can just use mutate exactly like we have before. If the function is not vectorized, then we need to add rowwise to our dplyr pipeline to tell dplyr to work with one row of the data at a time, just like the apply functions do. And then we can also repeat things for each group in a data frame by using group by and executing our custom functions in summarize. And the key is that those functions need to take one or more vectors as input, which come from the columns of our data frame, and return a single value. Oh, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can record the last lecture for next week. Here we go. And so, but just like when apply 